Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a simple logo animation inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So the first thing we're going to do is populate the timeline with a background color, which you could easily replace with a background video clip or background image as well. On video layer 2, we'll add in a text title, and then above that we'll add in the logo that we want to animate. So if you open up your media pool and you have a background image or a video clip that you want to use, you can drag that onto video one to make it the background for everything in the sequence. But if instead you want to use a solid background color, then you can go to the effects library in order to generate that. So if you go to effects library and under toolbox and generators, we'll have the option to create solid color. So we can put this under the timeline. And then with the solid color generator, we can stretch the duration to be as long as we need our logo to be. So later on, feel free to change the duration if you need to. And then we just need to select a color for this solid background. So I'm going to click on the color here. Uh, we can choose a starting color and then kind of just modify it to whatever we need it to be. So if we wanted to go with something kind of purple, we could take the slider here and make it a lot darker so that white text would be easier to read. So let's hit OK there. Now I'm going to want this background color to fade in over time. So I will take this white notch at the top left of the solid color clip and bring it in about two seconds there, which will create a transition from the black background, which will create a transition going from the solid black default color to the solid color that we generated. So if I hit play, it'll look something like that for the first two seconds. Now we can add in a title, so I'm going to go to titles and I'm going to choose text plus because it gives us extra options above a standard text title. So I'll drag this into video track two. I'm also going to bring the visible timeline tracks down because we're not really dealing with audio right now. So let's just focus on video two and video one with this title. I'll stretch it to be the same duration as the solid color. And now in the inspector for the text plus, we can change what the title is going to say. So I'll just call it a logo tutorial here, although that's going to be quite large. So there's not really space for a logo to go next to it. So I'll decrease the size here. So let's make it something like 0.8 or so. So I will take this and make it a little bit off center by going to the second tab here. So for layout, we can change the center X to be a little off center and then we'll have the logo go over here on the left. So now we need to put the logo on the video track three so that it rests above everything else. I'm going to shrink our video tracks here so that we can have space for video track three right above it. And I'm going to left click on the logo from our media pool and drag it onto video track three, which is automatically created for us. Also take the duration of this logo clip and extend it to be the duration of the other clips as well. So they're all matching each other in duration. Now for this tutorial, it's going to be very handy to use the viewer overlay. You can see that I already have it enabled because uh, when we select any of our clips, we get these controls to adjust the transform, such as the width of our clip, the rotation of it, and the anchor point, and underneath that, the position as well. So if you want to enable the viewer preview window, you can either hit shift tilde on your keyboard. Tilde is underneath the escape key, by the way, or you can click here for selecting a viewer overlay. So we'll start with transform. So sometimes it's going to be easier to change properties in the preview window using these gizmos. Um, if you prefer though, you can go over here to the inspector and you can shrink it by left clicking on a property and then dragging its value to where you need it to be. So if we want to adjust the position of this clip, what we can do is just left click anywhere inside the box, press and hold and position the logo where we want it to end up. So I'm going to put it right around here and then I'm going to go back to the text plus clip and we're going to move this text over to the right a bit. And we can have that kind of be how everything ends up in the end. I think one more thing I'd like to do is to add a vignette on top of the background. So we can't actually add the vignette effect directly onto a solid color generator. But what we can do is take our video tracks two and three, move these up one track, and then we can put an adjustment clip layer here for video track two. So in effects library, we can go to generators, we can go to effects and then adjustment clip and drag that onto video track two. So now any effects that we want to apply to lower layers, we can just put onto adjustment clip. So I'm going to go to now open effects and scroll down to find uh, the vignette effect and drag this right onto video track two on the adjustment clip layer. So now, although we can't directly apply the vignette to the solid color, we can put it on a higher video clip. 
So with this open effects, I'm going to probably want to decrease the color a little bit. So with the settings for the adjustment clip, I probably want to make it a little more transparent. I don't want the edges to be completely black there. We can't add transparency directly to the color itself, but what we can do is add blend to this part of the layer. So this will make it so that it is kind of partially transparent. If I make it 0.25 blend, then it's only using 75% of the vignette to layer on top of everything under it. So that'll allow uh, 25 percent of the original color to be at these corners here and uh, when we add a little bit of that blend in it looks better so i think i'll crank it even higher let's make it um 0 0.5 i don't want the vignette to be too dramatic there so one more thing i'd like to do with this text plus title is to have it transition onto the screen with an animation so we can add a video transition to a text clip by going to video transitions and I think the one I'm going to want to do is a wipe of some kind. So let's do an edge wipe here. I'll drag this onto the clip and we'll make its duration two seconds in the inspector. So you can left click on the edge wipe to edit it and then double click the duration, type in how long you want it to be. And then that should give you a two second transition there. So what we're going to want to do is make it wipe from left to right. And to do that, I believe we want to make the angle 90 so that it's going to start from the left side and go over to the right until it's fully revealed. So if we go to frame zero here and hit play, we should get once it actually renders a smooth wipe from left to right. So you might need it to take a second to pre-render everything, but once your animation's in the cache, it can look something like this, where it smoothly goes from left to right. Okay, now we just need to animate the logo, and this is going to be where having the viewer overlay becomes very useful. So figure out how long you want your animation to be. We can say three seconds or so here. So I'm gonna go to three seconds and I'm gonna keyframe all of the properties I think that I might want to change. So basically everything in the transform. So zoom, position, rotation angle, and might as well keyframe the other things just in case too. So at three seconds, all of those properties are gonna be this value. And now we can go to an earlier point and modify it. So at frame zero, at the start of all this, I might decide I want the logo to start up here in this top left area. And when it starts there, I might want it to be shrunk as well. So I can either use the zoom controls and the inspector, or I can use the on-screen viewer overlay. So I'm going to use the viewer overlay here and shrink it a lot. Actually, we can just make it basically zero there. So now if I hit play, it's gonna go down for that three seconds but I want to add more movement than this. And we can also add in some rotation. So rather than just going straight down, we can go to about one second and 15 frames. Uh, 15 frames on this video clip is half a second because the timeline is running in 30 frames per second. And then we can adjust the position of this. So rather than going straight down, we can have it go over here to the right. And you can see whenever we add these keyframes in, which as long as you've created one keyframe on the timeline for the clip, if you adjust the values at a different point in time, new keyframes are automatically created. But uh, when you have these keyframes set, you can see the keyframes indicated by these white circles, and you can see everything that goes between. You can also tell the relative speed as it indicates with these small white dots. So if you see white dots really close together, that means it's gonna be doing very slow movement. And if you see them far apart, that means that the position is moving quite fast over time. So now if we go to frame zero and hit play, it's gonna linearly go from the top left to the right and then over here on the left. Next, I'd like to add in another keyframe point. So somewhere about two seconds and 10 frames, I'm going to want to bring this down here. Uh, whenever we click and drag it, remember a new keyframe is created automatically. So now it's gonna bounce from here to this point on the right to down here and then up to the top. And maybe we actually want it to go straight up to the top for that last keyframe. So I'll put it here instead. Now, so far all of these movements have been completely linear. So it's just going between one point directly to another, but we can actually curve those lines if we so choose. So if you expand this curve editor on the clip by left clicking on the thing that looks kind of like a uh, line on a graph, then you can actually see what's occurring for your properties that are being animated. And you can click on this dropdown to adjust other keyframed properties. But for right now, we just care about the position X and position Y. So if we left click on the dropdown in the top left hand section for this uh, curve editor, we can toggle the properties that we're interested in editing down here. So I'm gonna get rid of zoom X, zoom Y, and I'm gonna toggle on position Y 
but turn off rotation angle, pitch, and yaw for the time being. And now we can left click between the lines for position Y and position X. So rather than have linear movements, I'm going to want it to have a little bit of a curve to it. So I'm going to left click on one of the keyframes we want to curve, and I'm going to hit this curve option, which will take the keyframe and add handles to it. Now, if you wanted to, you can adjust these handles, which would adjust the path for your animation. But there's a good chance if you've already decided the keyframes for where you want to be at, that using the default curve and not messing with the handles may give you a good result. If you'd rather it be a little different though, feel free to modify it and get a different path for your animation. So I won't add the curve handles to the third keyframe down here because I don't want there to be a curve going upwards to the final keyframe point. This is just meant to go straight up. So now we just need to switch over to position X by left clicking on the brown line and I'll click on position X right here. You can see that when you add the curve handles to one of the positions that it adds it to both of them. So as long as you don't want to adjust the curve handles and make the animation look different, then we're pretty much going to be good there. So we can hit play and see how the animation looks so far. So right now the animation of the movement is going to look something like this. Uh, the final transition up here is a little bit on the slow side. So what we can actually do is take the position keyframe over here and move it to the left in order to decrease the number of frames that are going to occur for this final point. You can see in the viewer overlay that when a part of the animation is going very slowly that there's a lot of dots because it's only moving a little bit between each of those frames. So looking at the space between these white dots will give you a good idea of the speed of your animation at any of the various parts. So let's click on the position Y line and now we can do the same thing with position Y. We can pull this over to the left. So since we've reduced the number of frames it takes for the logo to get to its final position, we should also adjust the keyframe for the zoom as well. So if you use the left and right arrows on your clip uh, for the keyframes, you can figure out where those are at. So I'm going to just take these values here of 0.32 and I'm going to go to the point in the timeline where that position X final keyframe is snapping to it like so. And I'm just going to paste the values in and then I'll hit right arrow to go back to the original final keyframe and I'll just click on the red diamond in order to remove it. It's no longer necessary. So now the zoom and the position changes should match up and they stop at the same time. So one other property we can add into this is rotation, making it do a couple full 360 degree rotations. If I hit the right keyframe arrow next to rotation angle, we can see we already set up a keyframe earlier. So I'm going to uncheck that right now. And then I'm going to find the frame where the animation ends here and I'm gonna to snap to it once again. And now I will set the rotation angle here at let's say 720 to do two rotations, keyframe it. And now if we go back to frame zero, we can set the rotation angle back to zero. So it doesn't start rotated, but it rotates twice over the duration of this animation. So as long as you have those two keyframes set, you should get two full spins. So let's go ahead and play it in the timeline. So here it's rotating to the left. If you wanted it to rotate to the right instead, then what you can do is just take that final keyframe and make the rotation angle negative. So let's take that 720 and make it negative 720, and then you'll get the same thing in reverse. So let's hit play, and now it rotates to the right instead. And that basically gives you your animation. We can play it back one more time here. So one thing we can see if we kind of go through the timeline is that the wipe of the text kind of overlaps a little bit with the logo right here. So what we could do is actually take the logo text and make the timing of that wipe transition match our logo. So let's go find that final frame where the logo is right there on the center. I guess that is two seconds and 22 frames in. And let's just expand the edge wipe to match that. So it'll snap into position as long as you have snapping enabled on your timeline. And we can play everything back one more time. So it almost overlaps here just a tad. So what I'll do is I'll just decrease the size of the text just a little bit more to 0.18. And that looks like it'll be okay. I'll hit the right arrow a couple times to go frame by frame and just make sure that everything looks good here. No overlapping. So that'll probably work. Okay, one last thing. Um, since at frame zero, and I'll turn the viewer overlay off for a second so we can see it. We're not starting a zoom of size zero. So on the first frame of the video, it's actually visible here. So what we could do is set the zoom to zero at the first frame, which will make it pop onto the screen immediately. 
uh, one frame afterwards. But what we might want to do instead of that, or in addition to that, is to animate the opacity. So I'm going to take the opacity at frame zero for the DaVinci Resolve logo clip there, set it to zero, and I'll go, let's say, one second in, and then hit the keyframe button so that we can set a new value at a different point. Go one second in and make the opacity 100%. So now if we go to the first frame and hit play, it'll fade in over a second, which might make it a little bit more smooth, but honestly, I think one second may be too long there. So I'm gonna remove that keyframe. I'm gonna go halfway in between and I'm going to make it 100% opacity there. So at 15 frames in, half a second. And now we can test it one more time at frame zero, hitting play. So I think it looks better there with a quicker transition to full opacity. So we've gone ahead and created a simple logo animation here. So one last thing we can add in here is a fade out transition. So rather than adding something to each track individually, what I will do is add on one more video track and then in that fifth video track, we'll add in another color generator. So this color generator is gonna generate the color white. So let's go ahead and change that color there. So you can see wherever the color is, it's gonna be pure white. Let's adjust the length of that clip so we know where we want it to be. And then what we can do to really easily animate this so that it doesn't go from our logo to being instantly white is to take the white notch and drag it in to be as many frames as we want there to be a transition. So if we play this back with a 15 frame notch there, we're gonna get a fade to white that occurs over 15 frames. So likewise, we can also take the right side notch, bring that 15 frames in, and maybe we shorten the clip a little bit more here. So it'll look something like this when we play it back. And now all we need to do to transition to our main video is to add in a video clip here uh, right after our logo. So for instance, uh, just drag on this stock clip right after the logo and the timeline, and we can play back the whole thing. Uh, okay, one minor thing, we are going to want to adjust the solid color uh, so that it doesn't start fading back in until we have actually switched to our other clip. So make sure that this white notch comes at least at the frame or after the frame at which our logo ends here. So let's go back to the start here and hit play. Okay, and that looks better there for that fading out transition. So let's go to frame zero and play the whole thing. So that is going to be it for creating a simple example of a logo animation inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. I hope you guys learned something from this video, especially how to animate properties using the viewer overlay and the curve editor for clip keyframing. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.